How's it going, folks? Welcome back to the channel. This is Each One Reach One. I pray and hope that you guys are all doing well, and that I can teach and reach one of you, at least with this lesson, Lord willing, of course. All praise, honor, and glory belongs to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of the beloved, his only begotten son, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, who is our King, Savior, and our Redeemer. All right. Thank you guys for joining me today. All right. So we're here to, to kind of catapult from the last couple of lessons that I, I've done. All right. So in the last couple of lessons, what did I cover? Um, I covered you know, becoming a new creature and our, in our journey, we're supposed to, you know, make a transformation from who we were to who we're, we are intended to be in preparation for the kingdom, right? In preparation for salvation. But in that lesson, I was male centric in my, in my teaching, meaning I was mostly targeting my message to men. Why? It's because the Bible is targeted primarily to men. Why? Because the Most High's message is primarily targeted to men. Why? Because that is his order. The Most High works with order. All right? He gave instructions to his son, Shai, who then turned around and acted as the father's right hand and fulfilled his wishes, fulfilled his commands, fulfilled his will. He created everything that the father wanted to be created. The father gave him instructions and he carried it out. All right. In the same way, when we went astray and he wanted to reconcile us back to himself, who did he send? He sent his right hand. He utilized his pecking order, his hierarchy, right? And so in the same way, you know, he always teaches the men, right? And then the men are supposed to teach their women, to teach their wives. That's how it's supposed to go. And then the chill, the wives teach the children. That is the godly order. That's how it's supposed to go. So that is the reason why most of my messaging is targeted to men. But I know that there are sisters that follow the channel. There are women that follow my channel. Um, my daughters included. I got couples, I got three sons and, and two daughters. They all follow my channel. All right. And so, and first and foremost, my teachings are for them, right? Because I gotta feed my body. I'm given a responsibility over the members of my body to care for the members of my body. The head has to care for his body the same way Yahweh Shai, who is the head, cares for us, who is his body. Each man to over his household is the head and he must care for the members of his body. First and foremost, you can't care for other people if you disregard yourself, if you do not first practice self-care and self-love. And so that starts at home. What does the Most High do? He starts at home. He cleans up his own house first. He gets his own house in order before he worries about the other nations. It's the same for us men. We have to worry about our houses first. All right. So in that respect, I get my own house in order. And then secondarily, my message is for anyone out there who comes across the message. And if at least one person outside of my household can benefit from each message, job well done in my estimation. All right. So with all that said, this message is geared towards the women, the ladies, the sisters, all right? Israelite women, aka black women. This is for you. Now, I pray that you have the meekness and humbleness of spirit to take correction, to hear someone teach you about the things that you're doing wrong and help get you on the right path. We do it for brothers all the time, but I don't want just brothers to obtain salvation. I want the sisters to do so as well. But the same way there are things that men have to correct and do differently, do better in order to be found pleasing of the most high women, you have to as well. You can't, you know, fix a problem without first diagnosing it. You can't, 
You know, the first thing you do when you go into a hospital is they start to run tests on you and they ask you questions. They try to get to the bottom of what's wrong. They don't just start treating you. They don't just start prescribing your medication and start working on you, operating on you and doing things to you. No, they figure out what's going on, what is needed for this patient. Sisters, you as a patient on the operating table, you are on life support. You are in dire need of help. You know this, all right? Take the constructive criticism and the godly instruction, all right? And I'm gonna give it to you so that your blood is not on my hands so that when you meet your maker, when you stand before him in the judgment, you can't say, but I didn't know. No one ever taught me any better, you know, the way I grew up and my mom taught me and my dad wasn't there and well, my dad taught me this and blah, blah, blah. You know, the Most High is not going to accept any excuses because he's going to remember this video. He's going to remember the day that you came here. He's going to remember that as soon as I was, before I even got into the lesson, you clicked off of it because I gave you the heads up that I was about to begin teaching on the things that you have done wrong and the things that you need to do, you need to do better. He's going to hold you accountable for rejecting wisdom. Like he said, you have rejected wisdom. Therefore I have rejected thee. All right. So now with all that said, let us go ahead and get into this thing. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet, but I'm probably going to call it something like black women and wives from feminism to femininity. All right. Our ladies, our women know this is their weak point. They struggle with letting go of feminism and they struggle with femininity. Masculinity within our women is very high. It's very, you know, strong and toxic. And, you know, there is a what we call a gynocracy, a matriarch almost in the black community where it is almost irreverent. It is almost I'm sorry. It is almost disrespectful to hold black women accountable for anything because in the black community, black women are put on a pedestal and viewed as being gods. And God can't be questioned because God is never wrong, which we know. So they take that and we they make us view them as gods. And so you can't question them. And, and if you do, if you try to hold them accountable, you're villainized for it. But the spirit of the most high is going out through the earth and he's waking up people. He's waking up men and he's putting the spirit of correction out there. He's making men, men again. And part of men being men again is men correcting women. So no, we're not just going to shut up. We're not just going to leave you alone and let y'all do y'all and, and don't say anything. And no, we have to. We can't shut up because the spirit within us is burning is leading us, compelling us to do and say these things because it is the most high's correcting, correction going out throughout the earth. He is getting things back in order, all right? And he's primarily using men to do it. So all of these men that you hate, like the likes of Kevin Samuels that you hated, he was a messenger from God. He was sent to, to blow the trumpet, to show black women the mirror, to show them, them themselves to show them who they are, who they have been, to show them why they've been having the troubles and the failures that they've been encountering. He tried to teach them on how to do better, what they can do better, what they need to address in order to get better results, to be happier in life. And they hated him for it. They danced on his grave. So I don't expect there to be many sisters, many Black women to like this message, to care for, or to even get through the entire lesson. I've already probably lost, you know, about, you know, uh, three quarters of them with the title alone. And then half of that last quarter, you know, have already checked out <laughs> during this intro. All right. So the, those of you who are left, hey, you made it through the most high sifter. He vexed their spirits and got the rest of them out of here because he don't want them to be corrected. Let them who are unrighteous be unrighteous still. He wants them to keep that same energy because he's reserving them until the day of judgment. If you are still here, great for you. That, that probably means that the Most High loves you 
He's dealing with you and he wants you to fix some things because he doesn't want you to be destroyed with everyone else, with the wicked when he destroys the wicked. All right. Now, with all that said, I know that was a long intro, but I really do feel through the spirit that it was necessary. All right. So now let's get to it. We're going to start with Genesis. We got to start from the beginning. We got to lay the foundation because women are being taught. Young girls are being taught from older women, you know, who are bitter and they're just all messed up and they're teaching young women in the ways of womanhood, but they're teaching them incorrectly. They're teaching them everything that is counter to the most high, counter to everything that is feminine, counter to everything that is natural to a woman, which is going to cause these girls to grow up to be women that are going to have problems in the world and with men, and they aren't going to understand why. They're going to believe that the problem is men and not the, not the problem is with themselves because to their own understanding, they're doing everything they were taught. They're doing everything the women before them told them that they should do, that they must do. They are learning who men are and what men are supposed to do from women who are toxic or just don't know any better. And so when they encounter men and find out that men are not who and what they were taught and that everything they learned about from other women on how to to have a relationship with men, it was wrong. It was bad information. They aren't going to see that it was bad information they received. They're going to see it as a problem with the men. All right? And this is what they're dealing with because they don't understand godliness. They don't understand men at all. And many women who are in Christianity or coming out of Christianity, again, they Christianity is, is laced with feminism, feminist ideology which is a form of Satanism, right? So the true things of God are hard to be understood and hard for them to consume. Genesis chapter two, we're going to start with verse 15. See, because black women have a, a God complex, like I stated, all right? They believe that men are put here on the earth to serve them. That they are supposed to be put up on a pedestal and worship as goddesses and queens and so forth. Never have to lift a finger. And men are supposed to slave for them. That a man's role is to live in service to women. That's what they believe. This is what they say. I mean, all you got to do is just watch social media. Watch, Let them talk. And they'll tell you a man's job is, a, is this and this and this. A man is supposed to protect and provide and blah, blah, blah. A man is supposed to die for every woman, protect every woman, right? They got a, this long laundry list, list of what a man is supposed to do and be, right? But they can't really, you know, iterate anything when you ask them about women. You know, I'm just supposed to be here. I am the table. I'm not supposed to do nothing. I'm just supposed to show up. My presence is enough, right? I'm not supposed to do anything for you. You're supposed to do everything for me. This is what they believe. Christian women even say this. They have the same mentality. It's like, what book are you reading? All right. Genesis chapter two, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. So Adam has been created. All right. He's created first. This is the most high establishing his order. All right. Yahweh Shai, he's, he's doing a creating on the behalf of the father. He created Adam. All right. With the father, through the father's, father's power and instruction, all right? Woman is not here yet. He's establishing godly order by creating a man first, all right? And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die, all right? So he created him, he put him in the garden and he gave him a job to do right? And he gave them instructions on what was okay and what was not okay. Now, look, the very next thing that happens after the Most High gives them instructions on what's okay and what's not okay, listen to what he does now. Now he goes to create the woman. He gave the man instructions on life, right? And now he's going to create a woman, a stumbling block. Because it would have been easy for Adam to be obedient without the woman being there. But introducing the woman into the equation gave Adam a whole new challenge, all right? He has something to overcome in order to be obedient, all right? 
his own nature and manhood. All right. And this is something many men are having to do now, having to overcome their own nature and mask and manhood and reclaim masculinity and be obedient to the most high, keep godly order established and not be simps to women. The most high hates that. Adam was the very first simp. All right. And we all paid the price for Eve's disobedience, Adam's simping, and Adam's disobedience. Because Adam listening to his woman and not listening to the Most High was him simping and him being disobedient to the Most High. And we all paid the price for it. And to this day, wherever there is a situation where a woman is ruling over a man, a man is being a simp for a woman. A woman is giving a man instructions and a man is following the woman. The most high is not there. He's not in that union. All right. That union is destined to fail. Everything they do is going to be a problem. All right. Because God is not there. That's an ungodly union, an ungodly order. All right. So he says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help made for him. So Eve, her the reason why she's being created in the first place is so that Adam doesn't be alone. The Most High saw that it was not good for Adam to be alone. So Eve was created so that Adam wouldn't be alone. Adam wasn't created so that Eve wouldn't be alone. Eve was created to be a help meet for Adam. Adam wasn't created to be a help meet for Eve. You understand? And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. Right? So before Eve was even created, the Most High went through the process of creating other helpers. Right? Other helpers. But they were not fit to be the type of help that Adam needed. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man and brought her unto the man. See, so the Most High doesn't send you a husband, ladies. He doesn't send you a man, ladies. He sends you to the man. He brings you to the man, not the man to you. Right? So let's go to Tobit 8, verse 5 and 6. Then began Tobias to say, Blessed art thou, O God, of our fathers, and blessed is thy holy and glorious name forever. Let the heavens bless thee and all thy creatures. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. Gave him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. Didn't give, give Adam as a husband to Eve to be a helper and stay. It was the other way around. Of them came mankind. Thou hast said, it is not good that man should be alone. Not, he didn't have a problem with woman being alone. That was never the issue. The problem was with men being alone. Let us make unto him an aid, an aid, a helper, an assistant, like unto himself, right? Because Adam was an assistant. He was an aid unto the most high, right? A servant to the most high. And so Eve was created to be a servant unto Adam in the same way that Adam was created to be a servant unto the most high to work his garden, to work the land, to be a worker. So if Eve was created to be a helper unto Adam and Adam's job was to tend the garden and work the garden and keep it, what was she supposed to do? Sit back and kick her toe up? What kind of helper would that have been? No, she was supposed to assist him with his work in the garden. So where are women or our women getting this notion that they aren't supposed to work? That the man is supposed to do all the work and they're supposed to sit back and kick up their pinky toe 
like a princess, like a queen, and do nothing but be waiting on hand and foot while the man go out, do all the work, and bring everything back to her, and she benefits from all his labor while she does nothing. That is ungodly. A woman is supposed to get out there and work with her husband. You're supposed to help him. Whatever he is given to do by the Most High God, the woman is supposed to help that man accomplish that assignment, accomplish that goal, help that man out. The same way other women of other nations, you can find them. You can go to a Mexican restaurant or Hispanic restaurant and you can see the wives in there with their husbands. You can go to a Chinese restaurant and you can see the wives in there with their husbands. You can go to, uh, you know, India, whatever. You can go to a, a business for these other people and you can see a families in there. You can see the women and the husbands and everything. They're in there together. But somehow, somewhere, I don't know where they got it, Black women have gotten this notion, this idea that they aren't supposed to work with their man. They aren't supposed to help their man. They aren't supposed to, you know, assist him in any way. He said, if he's a real man, he's supposed to go out, do it all himself, get it all, bring it all back to her because his money is her money and her money is, is her money. <laughs> you know what I mean? so forth you know that's the that's the mentality they having that they shouldn't be helping i'm not going to do 50 50 uh eve had to get out there and go work she had to be a helper sisters where are you learning that you're not supposed to be a helper to a man who's teaching you this satan is teaching you that whatever person told you that they were satan's helper that's who you were taking instruction from unbeknownst to you all right. Let's go to Genesis 3, 16. Unto the woman, he said. Or is that where I want to go? Yeah. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. See, now some people believe that this was as a punishment, that Adam was never made to rule over Eve, that, you know, him ruling over her came as a punishment for her getting Adam to go off. But no, she was always supposed to be under Adam's subjection. It's just that now the Most High is having to emphasize it to her. Because she disobeyed, he's repeating himself. Right, he's re-establishing order because order was broken. Okay, re-establishing, not establishing, re-establishing. All right. So let's go to again. He didn't give Eve to rule over Adam. The fact that Eve did rule over Adam gave Adam instruction put her in transgression. And the fact that Adam listened to her, put him in transgression. A man that is ruled over by a woman, by his wife, the Most High does not respect that man. He hates that man. So you as a woman, if you are trying to rule over your husband, you are creating the circumstances where the Most High is going to hate you and hate that man. And so nothing that you do is going to be blessed by him. You're going to be cursed because you're going against his order. So he's not going to allow you to succeed and to win with a, a game plan that is counter to his own. No, he's going to make sure you fail so that you see that his way was the best way. That's the reason why the black community as a project, it is a failure because it is ungodly. Women rule over the men. Women have too much power in America and especially in the black community. The Most High hates the setup of the black community. That's why it is a failure. It doesn't prosper because nothing is going to prosper that falls outside of his order. That's the way it goes. Let's go to Sirach, chapter 25 a.k.a. Ecclesiasticus 25. Ecclesiasticus 25, verse 13. Give me any plague, but the plague of the heart, and any wickedness, but the wickedness 
of a woman. All right. You have to know what you're capable of and what's inside of you, sisters, because you have been told that everything about you is great, that you're perfect, that you're flawless. And you grow up believing this and you carry this into your relationships and you destroy all of your relationships and you sabotage all of your relationships and you set yourself up for failure because you have a, a, a wrong impression of yourself. You don't understand yourself as a woman, let alone a man. You don't understand men and you don't understand yourself as a woman because you're lied to every day by Satan through all of Satan's media and other forms of uh, uh, programming channels. That is not godly. All right. There is no wickedness like the wickedness of a woman. But why? Because the woman, as you saw in the garden, has always been Satan's weapon of choice against God and against his order and against men. When Satan wants to destroy men, he goes to the women. When Satan wants to destroy a civilization, a society, he corrupts the women. And then there's a domino effect, right? Let's go to verse 16. I'd rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. Yikes. Verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin and through her, we all die. Many men and children in the hood all throughout the world die because of a woman. Pillow talking, lying to one man about another man, right? Setting a man up, getting a man backdoored, right? Uh, 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 telling your son he got to go out there and go get it because mama need help. So he go out there and, and, and sell dope, go rob still commit crimes because he just can't be no grown ninja in mama house and not paying no bills and taking care of nothing. He, so he had to drop out of school to go help mama out. And now he ended up killed or hurt out there in them streets or hurting somebody else or killing somebody else. Right. If all women loved and appreciated and valued um, non-toxic, good men and required men be good men in order for men to have access to them, all men would be good win men because all men want access to women. Men become what they must become in order to get the women that they want. Women have the power to make men better because like it or not, ever since the fall, that's the curse of man that women have a sexual power over men, that men have a weakness for sex. Adam was the first to fall to it. And we have been suffering from that curse ever since. If the women could be better, the men would be better. That's why Satan attacks the woman. Right? Because the men, absent of the motivation of the woman motivating him to do wrong, the men would, would, would do the right thing. The men would do what they need to do. But when you introduce the woman and the woman saying, well, oh, I need this and I need that. I got to have it like this. I got to have that. I can't have no man that work no nine to five. A nine to five it was boring. I need a scammer. I need a drug dealer. I need a thug. I need a gangster. What you think men are going to do? and have an appetite for women and women are telling you what you need to be, who you need to be, how you need to be in order to be with them. And it ain't a good man. So women, you are creating either by being mothers through your parenting or by the way you're being women out here with men, you're creating the problems. You're creating the men who are a problem. You're creating your own um, dire circumstances. When you're out here talking about, oh, well, broke men don't deserve no love and don't deserve no sex. Oh, man who, who don't got, he ain't rich. He don't deserve no love and don't deserve no sex. So you create a bunch of incels out here. You know what happens when men are incels and they can't, you know, uh, exercise their biological imperatives? Rape. 
You get men who are out here taking it by force because whether you're going to give it or they got to take it, they got to have it. They have a biological need and drive to get it, to have it. So you created a society of circumstances where most men are not getting it. Most men ain't getting the whiff it. Most men don't get anywhere close to a woman sexually. So all of these deviants out here are being created by women, either their mothers or the women of society that they have a desire for who either don't have a desire for them or are being forced or coerced, co coerced into being the wrong type of men in order to have access to these women who truth be told are the wrong type of women. But a woman is a woman when it comes to a man who has no access to any woman. That's the truth of it. And you got to take some responsibility, ladies, because that is its biological function. A man can't stop his biological function. He can't, he can't, you would like to social re-socialize men. You would like to domesticate men like wild dogs, like wild animals. Men are who they are. You want to make a bear, not be a bear for your benefit. But a man is a man, regardless of how you feel about what a man is or what a man does. But you're so far away from God. You're following Satan's game plan and Satan's game plan is to get men to not be men. And you're you're the main agent of the destruction of men. Stop being Satan's helper. All right, let's go to Proverbs 14. Proverbs chapter 14, verse one. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Every wise woman buildeth her house, meaning to maintain her house, to repair her house, right? To keep her house intact, to keep her family intact. But what do we have in this satanic society? Women uh, leading the league in divorce, right? Women leaving their husbands. Right. Uh, uh, well, they say divorce is a 50 percent divorce rate. And of the 50 percent divorce rate, that 75 to 80 percent of the divorces are instigated by women. Right. Why? Because women benefit from divorce in the society. So the person who benefits from breaking a contract or breaking the agreement is, is always going to be the one more likely to break the agreement. Women don't have any incentive to build their houses. So they, they have been made foolish women by Satan who pluck it down with their hands. See, this is the reason why in the black community, marriage is very low because men are smart enough to wake up and to realize that marriage is a bad deal for a man. And it's already bad enough that in the black community, women rule over men with an iron rod, with an iron fist to give a woman the power of a marriage certificate over you is like signing up for slavery. That's why black men are less likely and black women are less likely to marry each other. This is the reason why. Because under Satan's system, it's not a good idea. It's not smart for black men to, to get married to people who are given a gun to hold at his head. And if he doesn't please her in every way she wants him to, if he doesn't live in subjection to her, to be her slave, that she has the power to, to bring him to ruin, to destroy him. That's why men, especially black men, are not getting married like that. It's not a good idea. And wait, ladies, if you want to be married, this is what you have to fight against. So you have to help the man see you as a good idea. Being married to you as a good idea, a, a good investment. Because he has to go against all good sense in order to do it. You have to make it worth it. 
and most of you can't or haven't been able to. You haven't learned how because you're lacking femininity. You don't have that one thing, that superpower that makes a man melt, that makes a man putty in your hands and make him want to do that with you and for you. You're masculine out here. Masculinity repels masculinity. Opposites attract. All right? But you're not being taught this. You're being taught that you know, it just become the man that you want. Whatever it is you want in a man, go and do that. Go and become that. And that should make you more valuable to men. And it doesn't. It makes you least valuable and, and less uh, attractive. Because straight men are not attracted to other men. Straight men are not attracted to male masculine qualities in the woman. It turns them off, turns them away. And so the man is not wrong for not being attracted to the things that you're attracted to because you're attracted to those qualities in the man. You believe that a man should be attracted to those same qualities in you. That means you don't understand men. You don't understand male, female nature. You incorrectly, ignorantly believe that the same things that you value in a man, a man should value in a woman. The same thing that makes a man attractive to you should make you attractive to a man. But that's not how it works. You're far away from God. You're far away from the Bible. You're far away from who men really are because you have become Satan's henchmen. You got to realize you are being used in the war against God and against your own people. You are the biggest weapons, the biggest tools of white supremacy, of Satan upholding his kingdom. Stop allowing yourselves to be used for Satan's purposes because this is what you're doing. Whether you know it or not, you're being made aware now and I'm delivering this in love, but I'm a man, so I'm gonna speak strongly the way a man speaks. And if you have been, if you have never heard a man speak like this, that means every man in your life has been weak. Right? I don't hate you because I speak strongly like a man does. You're just not accustomed to a man being a man because you're used to men cowering, simping, being pushovers and runovers. But this is what a man is. And in the world to come, only men like me are going to exist. You're only going to be safe with men like me. You better start getting used to it or be ready to perish. Because if you don't conform, if you don't convert, you will die. All rebels will be purged out. You will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In the world to come, you will be made a commodity. You will be passed around for soups, for toothpicks. Yeah, that word is that world is coming. The book of Eli, but way worse. It's coming. You got to get ready for what's coming because your safety will only be in men of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 31, we're going to start at verse 10. Uh, yes, verse 10. Description of a worthy woman. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Why ask this question? This is Solomon, the wisest man ever. Why did, why did he ask this question? Because a woman, a, a virtuous woman is a rare thing. Vir virtuous women are few and far between. It's not the norm. It's not the standard. Good women are not the norm. But yet women believe so because women believe, all women believe that they are all good women. And you know what I mean? That's what women believe. All women are good women. We all deserve the very best. That's not true. You get what you deserve by the most high God. If you're getting crap, the most high sent you that crap. Women all the time will say, oh, I can't wait. You know, most high is going to send me a good man, send me a better man than the one I got. And he, the one that you got is the one that you deserve. A better man deserves better than you. You think the Most High is going to send you a better man that you can ruin? Well, only if that man has made the Most High mad, if that man is made worthy of, of being with a woman that ain't a good woman. 
if he's made worthy of destruction, the man, once that man to be destroyed, oh, he'll he'll send them to you. He'll send them your way. You'll come across that good man and you will ruin him. You will ruin him. You're going to ruin the good thing. You're going to ruin the good man. And you are going to be the reason that man goes out there and dogs out the next 30 women. Horrible men are created by women. Women, I know you're going to find this hard to understand and hard to believe. All right. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies because she is a rarity. When you find one of these women, fellas, understand what you have in your possession. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. But most men's minds, their hearts can't safely trust in these women. It would be foolish for a man to put his trust in the modern woman of today. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Listen to the ver to the, uh, the characteristics of a good woman. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax, listen, and worketh willingly with her hands. She's not lazy. She doesn't just wait on a man to go and bring the money back and she sit back. She's not supposed to do nothing. She worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She bringeth her food from afar. Not the man bringeth her food from afar. She riseth. Listen, this is action on her part. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She takes care of her household. She cooks, she cleans. But today's woman will tell you that slavery. They fought hard to not have to be women, to cook and clean, that's slavery. She considereth a field and buyeth it. Wait, so she works, she earns money. She's buying land. But guess who she's doing it for? Her husband. She's doing all of this as a help me for her husband. He's, this is telling you what a good woman is to her husband. See, she's a helper. She's helping him out in life. She's easing his load. She's making life easier for him. She's helping him build, helping him accrue wealth. She's taking part in it. He's not doing it all himself and she's just reaping the benefits. She's assisting him in building and gathering and becoming rich and prosperous. She's aiding him in that. She's instrumental in that. All right? She considereth the field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands. She planted the vineyard with the fruit of her hands, with the money she labored for. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms, right? When it says she girdeth her loins with strength means her fortitude, right? She strengthened herself, her inner self, not like, you know, like the way today's women call themselves strong. No, not that way. In the way a woman should be strong and strengtheneth her arms, Right? She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She's not lazy. She's always tending to her husband's business. She's always trying to find a way to be of assistance to him, find a way to help. Because sometimes women are given a leg up. Sometimes women are given opportunities that a man is shut out from. If you are with a man and you're watching, you know, your man, he has enemies and your enemies that you both have are shutting him out and not allowing him to do what he needs to do. But they're allowing you to roam free. See, a good woman will take advantage and say, hey, all right. All right, uh, baby. Um, they're not letting you through the door, but they let me run wild through here. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go and gather and I'm going to come bring to you. I'm going to go get what they allow me to get and I'm going to come bring it back to you since I'm the one they're letting through. But no, that's not what our women do. Our women say, well, I'm getting it. I'm getting it for me. You go get it for you. Well, if I can get it, how come you can't get it? Because black women don't understand that black men have a different relationship with white supremacy than they do. White men don't see black women as a threat to them. Black men are the threat. So they allow black women to, to uh, achieve mobility and to 
to move upward because they know that the women will never raise up the community. Black men, when black men get, get money, when black men prosper, the community prospers. You get the black Wall Streets and, and, and all the other, you know, prosperous communities that were built by black men. All of these things happen when black men are given an opportunity to gain. But black women, when they do it, they do it for themselves to the detriment of their children, their men, and their communities. That's why Satan doesn't have a problem with allowing black women to achieve and to, to gain ground under his structure because he knows that by doing so, he will turn the black woman into the enemy of the man by allowing her to go out and gather and get more than him, to get up above him. She'll see herself as being better than him. Won't try to help him out of her circumstances. A man, we hear it all the time, a man will come and take a woman out of her bad circumstances and lift her up. Women will very rarely, if never, come and find a man and lift him up out of his circumstances and help him do better. And if they do, they'll disrespect that man the whole time, treat him like trash the whole time that they're doing it. And then when a the man finally gets on his feet and he leaves her, they'll say, see, this is the reason why you don't never help a man because as soon as he get on his feet, he going to leave you. No, he didn't leave you because he got on his feet. He left you because he remembers how you treated him when he wasn't on his feet. And that if he ever should fall again, he already knows what to expect from you. He knows what's coming. That's why he left. All right, but let's continue. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She's working. See, this is all what a good woman, a worthy woman. She's working to help her man. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She's a good woman. She's a good person. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. She's clothing herself and her household. Her husband is known in the gates, meaning he's respected. Because he has a good woman, he's respected. She's helping him garner respect of his peers, of the community, because of the kind of woman she is. Because a woman reflects the man the same way us as his people, we, we are the glory. The man is the glory of the most high. We reflect him, right? We reflect him. So when we make him look good, he is held in high regard. When the woman makes her man look good, her man is held in high regard. And the more he's held in high regard, the more opportunities he's afforded in life, which makes life easier and better for her as well. As a team, they prosper immensely from her making him look good, giving him nothing to stress about, not having to worry about his household, to worry about his woman not having to deal with the disrespect and, and everything else that comes along with a disrespectful woman. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Right, the whole neighborhood and all the people around in the community aren't all talking, talk, aren't all talking negatively about him because she's either lying to him in the streets or spreading his business abroad, right? causing everyone to look at him a certain way and deal with him a certain way because she understands that the way he's treated affects her. If her husband is not respected among other men, it makes her less safe. If black men, black women, listen, if black men aren't respected and feared among other men, you are less safe. Because the only thing keeping the other men from running through and, and running roughshod over you is the fear of what black men collectively would do. It's not you. They don't have respect for you. They don't love you or care about you. It's the fear of what black men collectively might do, might raise up. And that would be the straw that breaks the camel's back and make men, black men rise up and burn everything down. That's what makes you even partially safe. But you lose your safety. 
when you lose the men. That's the reason why black women are the most likely to be graped and to come up missing, to have something bad happen to them out in the world because they're the most uncovered. The only women are out here bragging about not needing men or having them. What you're doing is akin to leaving your house and telling and announcing to the world, announcing to everybody in the neighborhood that you're leaving your house. Your house is unprotected. You don't have an alarm system. You don't have any windows, no locks on your doors, no dogs or nothing, nothing to protect your property. And yeah, I'm gone and I'm always gone and I have no alarm system and no protection and no neighbors that watch out for my property when I'm gone. No, nothing. What do you think is going to happen when you announce that? Someone is going to come and steal and rob and take what, sh what you have. You make yourself a victim. Black women are making themselves victims by getting all over social media and saying, we don't need men. And the other people are watching. They're watching you. They're watching you be uncovered. They're watching you tell them that they have nothing to fear. They have nothing to worry about. They don't need to respect you. You have no protection. You have nobody that's going to come and make them pay for what they do to you. There is no reason for them to not violate you because you're telling them you don't have nobody and you don't need nobody. Ladies, men aren't scared of you. They're going to come and violate you if there aren't any other men around. They're going to violate your children if there are no other men around to stop them. You're causing your own problems and you don't know it. All right. It says her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. He's respected. She maketh fine linen and selleth it. She maketh fine linen. She worked and then she sold it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. So what is she doing all, all this for? Her husband. Strength and honor are her clothing. Strength and honor, not whoredom, not prostitute culture, which is Black woman culture at the moment, prostitute culture, transaction culture, whore culture, 304 culture. That's the current black woman culture at the moment. You can't call me a liar. You can't say that I hate black women by saying this truth. You all know it. We all know it. Everybody knows it. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. See, from femininity, because of her high level of femininity, when she opens her mouth, she does so with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness, a.k.a. laziness. She's not kicking back, just being lazy, expecting a man to do all the working and to bring back to her. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful. See, the favor that black women receive in this current society is deceitful. It leads them to believe that they are some special creatures, that they are better than what they are, that they are more worthy of what they don't deserve. They believe that what they're getting isn't what they deserve and they deserve better because the favor that they're receiving, what they're being told, what they're being taught, it's all lies, it's deceitful. All right? Beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, Yahweh, she shall be praised. Listen to this. Give her of the fruit of her hands, meaning give her what she's earned. Give her what she's worked for. Give her what she deserves and let her own works praise her in the gates. See, this is completely contrary to everything you women are being told about womanhood, about what a woman is, what a woman should expect, right? Completely contrary. Titus chapter two. Verse three, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Older women should be in behavior as it becometh holiness, not false accusers. Stop getting online, lying to the world, talking about how your baby daddy is a deadbeat and he's no good when the truth is you're, you're uh, practicing parental alienation. 
Stop telling everybody that the man didn't step up and he didn't want to be a father when, you know, that he just left you when the, the, the truth is that you never had a family in the first place. You was just out sleeping around and you end up getting pregnant. You didn't have a relationship. The man you got pregnant by wasn't in a relationship with you. You weren't in a relationship together. Y'all was just having sex. And then you got pregnant. He didn't leave the relationship. He didn't leave his family. He left you because you were never together. Or you got with a man that told you he didn't want any children and you try to make him be a father anyway. You knew he didn't want to be one. Stop getting out here lying. You try in your effort to try to make black men look bad in order to justify your own wickedness and your own bad behavior. You are making yourselves look horrible because we are in the time of truth. The most high is causing your own tongues to fall upon yourselves. You are ruining your own self image. Your group image is in the toilet, sisters. Your group image is in the basement, sisters. And you're doing it to yourselves. Stop blaming black men. Stop saying, oh, it's the black men. They're getting online and they're talking bad about us. They're talking negatively about us. That's why. No, it's you. It's you. It's natural for people to defend themselves against their attackers. You've been attacking brothers. You've been attacking black men for decades upon decades. And now men have had enough and they are defending themselves now. See, but we got so used to the, there is never a good excuse. You never hit a woman back no matter what she does. You apply it in to all of your war tactics against men. You think that you should, be, you should be able to put your hands on a man and that you don't face any consequences. And you also think that you should be able to lie about a man, speak poorly about, poorly about a black man, and he should never verbally defend himself against you either because you're the queens and the goddesses and the mothers of the children. You shouldn't talk about the mother of your children like that. Well, why are you talking about the father of your children like that? Why are you debasing and devaluing and disrespecting the black man to the whole world? If you don't want it back, don't give it. All right? You're receiving your recompense. This is what's happening. We are in the season of recompense. You're getting what you have sown. You are reaping what you have sown. You have sown hatred, you're getting hatred back. You have sown discord, you're getting it back. You've sown the seeds of I don't need anybody, now you're lonely. You've sown the seeds of I can do it all by myself, now you're having to do it all by yourself. All right? Verse four. Well, let's go, let's go back. Don't be false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Stop teaching the younger women to be whores that they need to run up their body count and learn themselves, find out what they like and who they like and, and everything else and that they need to have a bunch of bodies and that, you know what I'm saying? They need to be doing all of these destructive things in their youth. That's not being teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. That's what you're supposed to be teaching. Older women, you're supposed to be teaching young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet. Meaning don't get on social media, using social media as your therapist, you know, trying to get the whole tribe of the, the whack, negative, toxic sisterhood of losers to support you in your foolishness. Be discreet. Be chaste, not whores, not prostitutes, right? Keepers at home, good, obedient to their husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. If you're out here calling yourself a woman of God, and yet you are not doing all of these things, you are causing the word of God to be blasphemed by those who are looking at you and saying, wait a minute, you believe in God and that's how you act? That's what a godly woman acts like? That's how a godly woman talks. That's how a godly woman moves. Ugh. I wouldn't want to follow that God that causes you to act like that. You cause your God to be disrespected through your actions. 1 Timothy chapter 5. Verse 11. But the younger widows refuse. 
So this is giving instructions, telling brothers to refuse the younger widows for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, right? So this is basically just saying that younger women who are who are widows, remember, they are still younger, they're still hot in the pants and everything else, and they might try to turn to Christ for a time, because many do, because we all know that a, a 304's final form is a religious, is as a religious woman. So after they've gotten ran through and, you know, and they've become the, you know what I'm saying, the, the town bicycle and so forth, and they want to try to clean up their image or try to be born again, try to get a fresh start, they run the religion, they run the Christianity. Right. But it doesn't last because they're still young. They're still hot in the pants. It doesn't last. So they're initially they're uh, eventually going to run back to the streets. And because and because of this, verse 12. So now having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And with all they learn to be idle, they learn to be lazy. That's what they're doing. They're learning to be lazy. They cast off the truth of Christ, the truth of the Father, the truth of the Bible, the truth of men and women. And so through this current satanic society, they learn to be lazy, wandering about from house to house, <clears throat> man to man, or from man to woman, from woman to woman. And not only lazy, not only idols, but tattlers also, all over social media, spilling the tea, right? the tea sipping community, the gossipers and tattlers, but tattlers also and busy bodies, right? Busy bodies, all in other people's business. That's why our women love like love and hip hop and all of these drama shows. They love drama. They love to see other people's drama and dysfunction. That is entertainment to them. Drama and dysfunction is their favorite form of entertainment. Gossip, tattling, or listening to tattlers and gossip, right? And they're speaking things which they ought not. When they ought to shut up and, and be quiet, they're getting all over social media and they're saying things that they should just keep to themselves if they had wisdom, all right? I will, therefore, that the younger women marry, bear children, Guide the house. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. When you get on social media and you're talking bad about black men all the time, talking down about us, you are giving occasion to the adversary to speak repro reproachfully about black men and about black people. These people think all black people are fatherless. <laughs> they think none of us have fathers. Where do you think they're learning that from? Where are they getting this idea that all black men leave, no black men are fathers. They're getting it from black women. They're learning this from black women. Not that it's the truth. It's just that good black women are not getting all over social media to sound the horn for good black men. But the horrible sisters, the horrible women, they are the, they are the loudest. So they, so they are speaking, they seem to be speaking for the whole of black women, for the whole of black people. But that's not true. And these other nations, they're just now finding out, they're learning right now that everything that they've learned and thought and were taught about black men through white folks, through white media and through black women wasn't really true. They were they were fed a bunch of lies about black men. All praise, honor and glory to the most high Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, who was avenging and vindicating his men before the whole entire world. All right, let's go to Ephesians chapter five. Verse 22, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, right? It doesn't tell men to submit themselves to their wives, but in the satanic system where everything godly is turned upside down, where good is called evil and evil is called good, men are being made conditioned to submit themselves to their wives, Verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, not the wife, the head of the husband, even as, as Hamashiach is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body, the same way that the husband is the head of his family, and he is the savior of his body, right? The protector of his body, his family, 
right? Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything, right? The wives are supposed to be subject to their husbands. The husbands are supposed to be subject unto Christ. Christ is subject unto the Father. That's godly order, okay? Verse 33, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. See that she reverence her husband. So women will always see the first part, right? When the men are being told to love their wives as themselves, not love all women. Men are not given any, you know, commandment to love and protect and provide for all women, just their wives. Not every woman they meet, not every woman that they take out on a date, not every woman they're trying to court. No, you protect and provide for your household, for your wives, not for every woman. But women, somehow, they've got it in their heads that every man that they meet, upon meeting the man, the very first thing he's supposed to do is support, is start protecting and providing for her, start giving her provision. That is not how it works. Where are they learning this? What is the point of this message they're learning? Well, it's satanic. It is a message by Satan push through the women in order to get the women to be unruly, right? And unwanted, really, insufferable, to get the women to be extractors of resources so that Black men could never build or sustain and maintain anything, so that Black men could never cause the Black community to catch up with or surpass white supremacy. If they can keep Black men broke by having to spend a bunch of money on every woman at meet, they meet, then white supremacy wins. They never have to worry about black people, black men building businesses that stops them from having to work for their companies and help earn them money. So black women are helping to uphold white supremacy. They're helping to, to bring about the downfall of the black community, black men, black children, and even themselves. Either Wittingly or unwittingly, that's what's happening. All right, let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. See, so women aren't being told to submit unto every man, but submit unto your husbands. All right, submit unto your husbands. And when you start sleeping with a man, Technically, that man has become your husband and you're supposed to stop sleeping with all other men and you're supposed to humble yourselves and submit yourselves to that man. Because if he is not your husband, if you have no, no intent for this man to have a husband type role in your life, then you shouldn't be sleeping with them. That's the bottom line. You shouldn't be sleeping with a man who you don't see as husband that you can't submit yourself to. All right. Otherwise, you're out here moving around like a man does, making you masculine, making you unwanted by masculine, manly men. And you're only going to attract the kind of men you complain about and don't want, because those are the only kind of men that want you. All right. Colossians chapter uh, three, verse 18. And uh, let's continue. Verse 19. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children. Obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Pay attention to what just happened. Let's get it again. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. All right? Husbands. All right, so wait, the women are told to submit and obey their husbands. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. All right, husbands, love your wives. The husband above the wife, right? Children, obey your parents. Obey. It doesn't say love your parents. It says obey your parents, right? Why? Because look at, this is how godly order works. Obedience goes up and the love comes down. We be obedient to our God and our God sends love and blessings down to us. That's how it works. All right? Obedience goes up and love comes down. In order for love to come down, 
obedience must first go up. This is what our sisters have to understand. You want love. You want men to love you and honor you and cherish you without the respect and the obedience first being put forth. That's not how it works. The obedience has to come up first and then the love comes down. The Most High says, be obedient to me and I will love you. He doesn't say, I'm going to love you and hope that you be obedient to me. Because he did love us and then we showed him disobedience. Now, in order for us to get right with him, once you break, once, he, once I was broken, now in order for it to be fixed, in order for what has been broken to be fixed, it has to happen the other way around. The obedience now has to go up in order for the love to come down. Black women broke relationships with black men. So black women have to be the one to repair them, not the black men. The onus is not on black men, sisters. The obedience and the respect have to go forth first. And then the love, the honor, the protection, and the provision comes down afterwards. That's the way it works. That's the way it's supposed to work. All right, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any, if any of your husbands obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, because the wives, a good woman, women in general have sway over their men. Right. Women know this. This is why they use sexual manipulation and so forth to their advantage, because they know this to be the truth. But they use it. They use that power of that dynamic for evil and not for good. All right. You can help make a bring a man to God. Who is not already having a relationship with him himself. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear by being by seeing when your man sees what God has done to you, the kind of great woman that has been created via your relationship with the most high, it will make him want a, a relationship with them himself. It'll make him love and appreciate your God. Because look what he's done with my woman. Look at the kind of woman I have. She's a great woman to me because of her faith, because of her belief in God. And that'll draw him to your God to have to come develop a relationship with him himself, himself, who's adorning. Let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. Our women are so obsessed with makeup and jewelry and clothing. They spend no time becoming better women, working on their inner selves, trying to be a better person, a better woman and a better wife. They think that if they just work on the outward stuff, it'll make them worthy of everything that they want and desire. But that's not how it works. See, because women don't care about, for the most part, don't care about the inner man. They care about the outward situation of a man. That's why if you ever watch social media and you listen to women talking and they describe the kind of man they want, it's always going to be material. It's always going to be, it's always going to center around money. They never talk about the man's character, the kind of person he is, the kind of man he is, the kind of husband he has been or could be, the kind of father that he is or could be. It's always about what he can do for her, what he has. All right. It's always about materialism. And it shouldn't be that way. That's the reason why they're failing out here. And they just seem to can't choose right, but they're choosing, you know, what they like. It's not that they're choosing wrong. They're choosing what they like. They're choosing what they want. They don't want good men. That's the reason why they don't have them. There are plenty of good men out here, but that's not who they're choosing. Because that's not who they want. They don't value the characteristics of a good man. So they overlook the good men. That's what they do. This is the reason why fathers and brothers used to uh, arrange marriages for, for the women in their family because God knew what he was doing. The Most High knew that women make bad decisions about men. If leave, left to, their, to themselves, 
to make decisions on the man for themselves, they will usually make a bad decision. They will make a poor choice. Usually. All right. But let it be the hidden man or woman of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a, of a meek and quiet spirit. Listen, the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of the most high of great price. If a meek and quiet spirit in the sight of the most high is of great price, what is a loud, obnoxious, rude, and belligerent, and argumentative, and, you know, profane spirit in a woman? It's of little worth. It's of no worth. Right? That's the truth. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in the most high adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. She called him master. She understood her role in subjection to him and his role over her, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Right? His dues, the, the husbandly duties. Take care of your husbandly duties, right? Right? Be loving and affectionate with your wife. Right? Please her. Take care of her, her needs. Right? Because she has them. And likewise, woman, understand your husband has him. He's a man. His appetite is bigger than yours, larger than yours. Take care of him. But see, the women of old knew that they were they were not enough for the appetite of a man. And so those women back then, they understood the need for concubines. The women of today, they have no understanding of this. They're selfish. They want a man all to themselves, but they they don't want to be responsible for taking care of all of the man's needs. They want the man to change his needs and his desires and his own nature for them, right? Because they themselves don't want to have to be what they need to be for the husbands. They can't. It's exhausting. So instead of understanding I need help, I need another woman's help. No, I want them all to myself, but I got to trick him into not acting like a man, feeling like a man, thinking like a man and being a man. I got to make him more like a woman. So men have been tricked into becoming more like women, subduing their own nature for the sake of women's selfishness, their selfish desire to have a man all to themselves, but no desire to meet all of the man's needs. Right? The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. All right? Because that will happen. All right? If a man ain't getting it, he's going to start looking for where to get it from. And now Satan has an opening. He can send all sorts of women. He can send the wrong type of woman at your man. Destroy your life, his life, the whole family. Right? Satan now gets a doorway into your relationship, into your life. Because you weren't taking care of your man's needs. You didn't feel like his needs were your business. That it was your job. That you can get mad at him and withhold affection from him. And that it was your prerogative to do so. And that if he's a good man, he'll just accept you withholding and denying him and wait for you to decide to have, have mercy on him, have pity on him and, and, and give him some once a year, twice a year, maybe. Right? That's what they're doing. Women, through Satan's instruction, are trying to get men to no longer be men. Because women hate being women. And as long as men are being men, men are going to want women to be women. So 
their war strategy is to try to get men to not be men so that they themselves don't have to be women. First Corinthians chapter 11. See, just like Eve, who wanted to be more, she wasn't happy just being a woman. She wanted to be like God. She wanted to be more. She wanted to be up, uh, leveled up. She wanted to be like God. She wanted to be God. She wanted to be worthy of worship and praise. She wasn't happy just being a woman. She wanted more. The same thing afflicts women today. The same curse is on women today. Okay. All right. So 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we're going to start at verse one. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is a Mashiach, Christ, and the head of every woman is the man. And the head of Christ is the father, the most high. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head, who is Christ, right? Men are not supposed to pray having their head covered. I mean, there's not supposed to be anything or anyone between us and Christ. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. A woman is not supposed to be trying to go directly to Christ. She's supposed to go through her man and her man goes to Christ on her behalf, right? The same way, like remember when Abraham, um, you know, when he entreated for Sarah, he went to the most high about her being barren. Right. And uh, uh, when Isaac went to the most high for Rebecca. Right. The man had to go and pray and talk to the most high. For his wife. Right. The woman is not supposed to. She's dishonoring her head. When she prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, if she has no man. No husband, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. All right? For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and the glory of God. Listen to this. For as much as he, the man, the Israelite man, is the image and the glory of the Most High, but the woman is the glory of the man. See that? For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman. Listen, ladies, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Men don't exist to be your slaves or your servants, to be your workers or your do boys, to help you out through life because you're struggling, to help you out through life because you don't want to work, to help you out through life because you want to be a princess, because you want princess treatment. You want to be treated like a goddess and a queen. That is not the purpose of man. It is the other way around. You're supposed to serve man not man serve you. And if you're trying to get men to serve you, you are of your father, the devil. Satan is your father. Satan is your ruler. Satan is your God. Which means you're going to be destroyed by the God. Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh has slated you for destruction. You have a date with the lake of fire. You're going to go through great trouble in the days to come, if you are not covered. That's why in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. Because women are only going to be as safe as the man that they are with will provide for them. And only the women who are with the men of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, will be protected and safe. All other women will be for prey. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. All right. That's the truth of it. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. We're just being thorough here. A lot of this stuff is kind of repeti uh, repetitive, but repetition is the key to learning and locking things in. If you're, if you're still here, all praise, honor, and glory to the highest. He loves you. He's, he's cleansing your spirit. He's washing you with, with the word, making you ready, all right? So 
Keep at it. I know it's hard. It's hard to hear after everything that you've learned in this society, but you need to hear it because you got to depart from the ways of this world in order to be ready for the world to come and the, the order, the rulership to come, which is of our king. He's not going to do things the way, the way this current world does it. And if you can't conform and get on board with the way he wants to do things, not wants to do things, the way he's going to do things, you will perish, by the way. He will get rid of you. No rebels will enter in to his rest. All right. So 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women adore themselves in modest apparel. All right. Women, you got to adorn yourselves in modest apparel. What we got to do, ladies, we got to get away from all the tights, all the yoga pants, right? The booty shorts, the all of these different things that are not modest. With shamefacedness and sobriety, get rid of all the makeup and the lipstick and all of that stuff, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which, which becometh professing godliness with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. All right? With all subjection to the men, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. See, women aren't supposed to be teaching, but many are. Many are out here trying to teach. Many are heading churches in Christianity, which that shouldn't be so, but they are. That's ungodly. No matter what you say, it is ungodly. All right? He says, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. See, Adam wasn't deceived by the serpent, right? He was just a simp for his woman. She didn't trick him. She just got him to be disobedient to the most high. So he wasn't deceived. He just disobeyed the most high. Right, because she transgressed and she got him to sin with her because she didn't want to go down alone. Sounds like Satan, right? See, you see the, the chain of command from Satan to the woman, right? How the woman is a lot like Satan. Satan doesn't want to go into that lake of fire alone. So Satan's mission is to get as many people to go with him into that lake of fire as possible. If he got to go, you're going with me. Take y'all with me if I got to go. That's his stance. And I know some woman is out there saying, no, but the scripture says that, you know, man and woman, he created, created he them. They was created together. If you say that, you don't understand the scriptures. All right. And that's another lesson for another day. But I can briefly just tell you this. What you understand about that scripture is not true. All right. What that scripture is doing. See, because the most I told is that he he um, he prophesied the end from the beginning. He declared the end. From the beginning. So in, in Genesis, in the first chapter, when you hear about him saying that uh, let's create man in our own image on the sixth day, we create man, let's create man in our own image, right? And then he says, male and female created he them. That wasn't when he was creating man and woman. That was a prophecy. That was him declaring the end of things from the beginning. On the sixth day, a.k.a. the 6,000th year of human creation because a day is, uh, is as a thousand years, right? A thousand years is as a day until the most high, right? So for each thousand year block in history is the same as one day to the most high. And on each day or each 1,000 year block, what he said he would do on that day of creation is what he would do. So on the sixth day, when it says he male and female created he them, it's talking about how when we get to the 6,000th year, that's when men and women together, of, of the Israelites, we're going to be transformed together into his image. We'll be made in his image then on the sixth day when he glorifies us and make us like himself. 
Both men and women will be glorified together in that day. It wasn't talking about the literal sixth day of creation. It was talking about the prophetic sixth day, aka the 6,000th year of creation, which we were, which we are working to, to accelerate toward. And that's what this lesson is about. This lesson is part of the transformation process for the women. The men get it all the time, but the women need it also. In order for the women to be made in his image, you got to get instruction like this. You got to have these lessons. All right. But I got off course. Let's get back on. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Somebody needed that. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church, all right, in the assemblies of Israelites, all right? Let's go to, back to Apocrypha. Let's go to Sirach 26. Sirach 26. And we'll start at verse 1. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife. It doesn't say blessed is the man that hath a wife. No, it's a certain type of wife. Because the man who doesn't have a virtuous wife, though he has a wife, he doesn't, he's not blessed because his wife isn't virtuous. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be doubled. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband, and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. See, because she's going to be that man's peace. You'll hear our sisters all over social media talking about how uh, they don't want to be a man's peace, how it's stupid. Trying to be a man's peace. Don't be his peace. Be his problem. Right? A good wife is a good portion. Not any wife is a good portion. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. So a good wife is a good portion that is given to a man that the Most High considers a good man who fears him. All right? So a good woman is given to a good man. So if you are a woman and you feel like you're not with a good man or you haven't been with good men, guess what? Because you're not a good woman. So you were never given to a good man. That's the kicker. That's the kicker. That's going to be the hard part for you to swallow is having to understand that the reason why you claim you've never had a good man is because you've never been worthy of one. You got what you were worthy of. You are a horrible woman. So you were worthy of a horrible man. You were a wicked woman. So you were the reward for a wicked man. Right? I know this stings. Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart toward the Lord, he shall rejoice at all times. He shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. All right? So now let's uh let's skip ahead to verse uh 13. The grace of a wife delighteth her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. Not her loud mouth, her discretion. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. So when you find these women and they're not silent, they're not loving, they're loud and they're brash and they're rude and they're ignorant and they're manly, they're masculine. They want to fight. They want to uh, incite a man to violence and they want to provoke a man to anger and they're pushing his buttons and they're disrespecting them, calling them everything but what his mother named him, what his, and what his father named him. It's because that is not a gift from the Lord. She, that woman, is not a gift of the Lord to a good man. That is the reward of the Lord to a wicked man that is deserving of such a woman. All right? A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. 
all right? A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace and her continent mind cannot be valued as the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house mm. all right that's we can't get away from that let's go to ecclesiastes chapter 7 Verse 26, and I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth the most high shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. So what kind of men end up with these horrible women? Sinful men. What kind of women end up with these horrible men? horrible women who are sinners. That's how it goes. But good men, those who please the most high shall escape her, meaning you can meet this horrible woman while you are a sinner. Then while you are with this woman, you can come to the most high and no longer be a sinner. And when you do, he will make a way for you to, to escape that woman. He will make a way. I'm a living example of that. I know this to be true very well. Very well. I know that the Most High will get rid of a woman and take her out of your life. If you start to please him, he will remove an ungodly woman out of your life. And he will make sure that when he removes her, that he removes her and makes her incapable of destroying your life on the way out. Once she's gone, he will make it impossible for her to bring you to ruin after the fact. Trust me, I know. All praise, honor, and glory belongs to the highest. Let's go to Surat chapter 36. Verse 24. And ladies, you better be careful. Because the Most High will get rid of you. If that man is striving to be a good man and he pleases the Most High, or the Most High has it in, in his plan for that man to come to him at some point, he will get rid of you. He will remove you out of that man's life while he is doing it or before he does it. And he's not going to allow you to destroy that man. If you try to destroy that man, which the Most High loves and plans on working with, the Most High will take you off of this earth before he allow you to be a problem in that man's life. You better be cautious with how you deal with men that the Most High loves. You understand? Ecclesiasticus 36, because you will bring, bring destruction upon yourselves for allowing Satan to use you for his business. All right, Ecclesiasticus 36 and 24. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession he that getteth a wife begetteth a possession a help like unto himself and a pillar of rest a wife is supposed to be what a pillar of rest and a help like unto himself he, and a wife is a man's possession make no mistake about it right a woman belongs to the man not the man to the woman all right, that's the truth. Verse 25, where no hedge is, where no protection is, where no security is, where no protective um, boundary is, there the possession is spoiled. So where no man is, where there is no husband, where there is no man with structure and order, the woman is spoiled. This is the reason why black women are continuously spoiled, constantly make the news, constantly being unalive, constantly go missing because they are a spoiled possession because there is no hedge there. They have no husbands and they have no father's security, no security of 
brothers or any of the other men in their lives. They're renegades. They're doing their own thing. I'm grown. Who gonna check me, boo? You know that. You know the, the energy. You know the vibe. Those women are hedgeless. They will become a spoiled possession. All right? And he that hath no wife will wander up and down mourning because having a good wife is a great benefit to a man, a great wife, not, a, just, not just any wife, a great wife is of great worth to a man. And most men don't even have girlfriends, let alone wives. That's why most men are incels. Most men are unhappy. And all of this violence and everything that you see taking place out here in the world, the root of it are all of these men that, are, that don't have women, right? Women are what make men care about society. Women and children, a, a man's woman and his children is what makes him care about the future, is what makes him care about himself, is what makes him care about his circumstances, is what makes him care about the economy and, and so forth, which makes a man go to war, fight a war to go die in the war to protect those that he loves to ensure their freedoms and liberties and so forth. But in a place where most men are not coupled, they have no women, they have no wives, they have no girlfriends, they have no love or affection from any woman, nothing but disrespect, nothing but hate and animosity from women. What does it do? It creates a bunch of angry, violent men and who are going to be who are going to be the main recipients of that anger and that violence the women guess who's responsible for that the most high he's making women pay for what they've created for the circumstances they've created through their ungodly desires and their ungodly doings you want better ladies you got to do better now is the time to start doing better to start being better there is no longer a covering, no longer an excuse for your bad behavior, for your ignorance. Ignorance will not be an acceptable excuse to the most high. Trust me. So get yourselves in order. Get your houses in order. Start being better people. Start being better women. Start being better wives, better girlfriends, better mothers better followers of the way. All praise, honor, and glory belongs to the heavenly highest. Abba Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Hamalak, Yahweh Shai, Wahab, Wakakadash. See you guys on the next one, Lord willing. Be a blessing to someone else today if you can. Each one, reach one. Shalom.